Hello. Rampant fire outbreaks constitute one of the calamities uh, common at this period of the year, perhaps because the period is associated with dryness. We will go beyond that and dig into other matters relating to fire outbreaks. Good evening and welcome to Weekend File for today. Every year, Nigerians con continue to count losses as a result of fire disasters. Records show that critical sectors of the nation's economy and infrastructure are consumed by fire, leaving huge economic and human losses with an estimated cost of six trillion naira within the last five years. The incident rate or incessant rate of fire, especially in the Nigerian markets and commercial nerve centers, leaves nothing to be desired. Major cities such as Lagos, Sokoto, Port Harcourt, Kebi, Adoekuti, Gashua, Ibadan, Newi, to mention but a few, have all experienced serious consequences. Uh, some observers think that uh, these fire outbreaks are often caused by carelessness, gas leakages, and storage of flammable materials and substances at houses and, of course, in marketplaces. And as the intensity of damage and losses are exacerbated, by the dryness of the season. How equipped is the nation's fire service to respond to the frequent fire outbreaks, which most times overwhelm its capacity? Many call for re-engineering of the fire service to enhance uniformity and, of course, promote high-tech operational mechanism in firefighting. We will dissect all of this in this edition of Weekend File. We value your company and thank you for choosing to stay with us this day. This is We Can File, and my name is Kirian Umayo. Thank you once again for finding time to be part of the show. And now the news is next. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the Anti-Corruption Day, the need for citizens to join hands with government to rescue the country from what is believed to be the biggest challenge has been re-echoed. Director General of a non-governmental organization, Corruption, Injustice and Abuse of Office in Nigeria, Professor Amos Awodia, said this at a seminar to mark 2017 World Anti-Corruption Day here in Abuja. Ali Utukul was there. Concerned by the problems and threats posed by corruption to the stability and security of societies, every 9th of December since 2003, has been set aside to mark the International Anti-Corruption Day. To commemorate this year's day in Nigeria, corruption, injustice and abuse of office, a non-governmental organization aimed at fighting these social vices, organized a seminar to drum support of Nigerians to collectively work together to fight corruption in the country. The director general of the organization says the challenge of corruption cannot be addressed by government agencies alone. We also recognize that thinking solely in terms of protection instead of prevention is throwing up the white flag and surrendering to the inevitability of crime. To achieve this objective, the organization says it will recruit volunteers across the country who will assist in the crusade against corruption and other social vices by reporting such activities to the three arms of government for necessary action. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. Uh, thank you, Ali, for that report. And Nigeria, incidentally, is among the nations battling corruption. And tonight we have in the studio Ayo Oyalowo, a social commentator to share his views on the Nigerian situation. Uh, you're welcome to We Can File. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. All right, all right. Uh, now, the current administration uh, declared war against corruption from day one. What's your assessment of how this corruption has been fought so far? <coughs> well, um, my assessment is going to be multifaceted. In some areas, we have um, the administration have um, recorded good success. As in, currently now you will agree with me that people in public office are more careful of the public trust that they hold. Just as we speak, the DG of SEC is under suspension. 
we all remember the case of the former uh, Secretary General of the Federation. Yes, the uh, SGF. SGF, yeah. yes, we all remember what happened to him. While those are good milestones, those are good things, we still have challenges. We still remember just a few weeks ago when the EFCC went, wanted to arrest somebody and another agency stood against them. So those are some of the challenges. We also all remember the cases of the judges who were all caught with various sums of monies in, their, in different currencies. And we all know judges in Nigeria are paid in Naira, not in dollars, not in euro, not in... So yeah. those are challenges. And we all know what happened just this week that is closing, where one of the judges who was finger, fingered us at that time decided that he wanted to retire or, uh, until the news came up that he was not going to be allowed to retire because he was supposed to be fired. So those are good milestones. We cannot lie. Things are no longer what they used to be. Yeah. But we still want to see What about among politicians? More. What about among politicians? Now, <clears throat> among politicians, we have to be a bit more careful here. You see, it's easy to throw words around and say things. I was, I was driving a few days ago, and somebody ate something in his car. Plenty of it, and they threw it on the road. And I said, this same guy will very soon point hand at somebody in the government and say they are bad. See, the launching that the government launched and said, the change begins with me. Those are some of the things. We ourselves, I was coming as I was driving to your studio just now. You know, when you come in from this main road, it's a one-way drive. People are driving against one way, as, as, as I was coming just now. So it's easy to say politicians are corrupt, but what about ourselves? What do we do when nobody's looking? You run the red light, yeah. you, you do all manner of things, and then we say politicians. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, all right, uh, let me stop you there on, on this very uh, point and, and move to the next. Now, critics say that the fight is uh, sectional, that some have been selected, you know, and some <laughs> are, uh, who are supposed to be in the net are uh, moving freely. Uh, on the street. Well, so, you will always have these kind of issues because of the system that we have in place. You remember the president said something when he came in. He said one of his biggest challenges is and still remains the judiciary. You see, you can only arrest and produce evidence. The judges that are now being fired, evidences were given, but they were still discharged and acquitted. So what do you expect the government to do in that? Will President Buhari sit, I mean, wake up and start arresting people? He, he said something recently, if you follow some of his speeches, he said when he was a military man, they will arrest you and then you will have to prove yourself not guilty. But now they cannot do that. The, the, you must follow the rule of law. It is the way our laws are structured. It seems people crafted this law to suit a set of people. That is why if you still grab not in the market or break, it is easy to lock you up forever. That's but somebody who's a that's someone okay, who stole okay. million because you can hire so many sons. Right, time is not on our side, but I want to take that, this one before we go to the final one now. Um, what has the nation learned or what can the nation learn from the just the, concluded uh, world uh, anti-corruption? What thing? Nigerians should learn is that uh, we cannot easily, we shouldn't point fingers. Everything starts from us. Like I just gave examples yeah, exactly. of things that I've said here. So we, 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 uh, we, we will not have co politicians or leaders who are different from us. Whoever we are electing, whoever, they will this be part of us. Okay. So All whatever right. you see in government, in public, public places, That's are a reflection are. of who oh, we are. Okay. So yeah. the change must truly begin, begin with, with us. Okay, thank you very much. Are you a yellow or the social commentator who have uh, just shared his views? Our views on that. Thank you very much for thank you very your much time for having me to talk on corruption. And I, as a young man, it's good you, you are talking about corruption, so the younger ones also. They, I mean, our generation must do better. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> thank you. Now to other news. Now the Nigerian police force has uh, paraded suspects allegedly specialized in kidnappings and car snatching along Abuja Kaduna and the Abuja Joss highways. Among the suspects there is a retired Nigerian army officer who served with 32 artillery division in Ogun State. Uh, parading the suspects, first public relations officer, CSP Jimo Mushud, said the Nigerian police will not relent in its efforts in ensuring the security of lives and property of Nigerians. And carried out in the last one week, all the suspects that we are parading today were arrested and all the exhibits before you were equally recovered from them. Our investigation to all the suspects arrested are ongoing and all of them will be charged to court on completion of investigation. Some of the suspects said they were involved in kidnap of the brother of chief of staff to Kaduna State Governor. 
Yeah, because government didn't provide since during Abacha time. We do buy it. So the authority doesn't issue clearance from to the kids. What year did you retire from the military? 2012. Now, some of the items uh, recovered from the suspects include fake number plates, three double barrel pump action guns, a Kia SUV, television sets, and anti car tracker. All right, the Enugu State Chapter of All Progressives Congress, APC, has commended the Kano State Chapter uh, for not only endorsing President Muhammad Buhari for the 2019 presidential election, but for electing uh, to buy nomination uh, for him. A statement signed by the Publicity Secretary of the Enugu State APC indicated that they are in league with Kano APC and wish to complement their efforts by printing posters of Mr. President bid to the 2019 presidential election. The party states that it is supporting the president. The support is based on his uncommon integrity, quotient, avowed commitment to Nigeria, and selfless service. Only five out of the nine aspirants that showed interest in the chairmanship of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, eventually contested as the party's national convention, which held in Abuja, Chief Labode George pulled out barely 12 hours to the convention, followed by three others. Early on Saturday morning, politician or political correspondent Ablahi Garbabin Kutu has that report. The withdrawal of Chief Olabode George from the chairmanship race is seen by political watchers as a protest against what is considered a conspiracy against the Southwest, whose candidates, seven of them, insisted that the position of chairman must be microzone. The party maintains that microzoning is unconstitutional in PDP. This development led to the withdrawal of Chief Bode George, describing the convention as a preconceived and monetized. The issue of microzoning totally destroyed the very fiber, the heart of the party. Chairman of the party is just, a, is just another office in the working committee of the party. I considered it as a personal insult to my people, and I thought it was high time let them have enough. As delegates arrived at the Eagle Square venue of the convention Saturday morning, three other candidates, Chief Rashid Laduja, Jimmy Abaje, and Otumba Bianga Daniel pulled out, leaving only five candidates in contention. Another supporter of microzoning, Senator Buruji Kashamu from Ogun State was also suspended from the party for what the leaders call anti party activities. The chairman of the Electoral Committee, Gabriel Suswang, however, assured delegates of the transparent process. It's our promise, PDP people and Nigerians, that they will see the best convention ever conducted in this country. Party leaders addressed delegates before the commencement of the election proper, with more than 2,000 delegates expected to elect 21 national officers. Another important decision taken by the delegates at the convention is the constitutional amendment as it affects sections of the party's constitution relating to party members rejoining the party who had earlier on left the party for one reason or another. With the election of new officers, the caretaker committee stands dissolved. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerbabrunukudu, NTA News. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, has urged foreign investors to partner with the corporation in its multi-billion dollar projects expected to come up in the new year. The GMD, McKenty Baru, who made the play in London at the Forbes Award on him, said the corporation would be involved in a number of projects which would require international collaboration. Justin Bem Unyi reports. CGMD made it known that the corporation's program for 2018 is very aggressive and will require cooperation from the international community in supporting its activities through technical and financial collaboration. He listed some of the mega projects that would be launched in the coming year to include Bonga Southwest's Aparo and development of modular refineries amongst others. The confidence of investors today, he says, is being restored. Thanks to good governments provided by the administration of President Muhammad Buhari Jisihar. Very soon, 
will be launching the contractual financing of the 683 kilometers by 40 inch gas pipeline from Ajakuta to Kano as part of the Nigerian gas infrastructure blueprint. Baru maintained that within the last three years, the corporation has secured about $3.7 billion alternative financing agreements aimed at sustaining and increasing the national daily production and producibility. The 2017 Africa Oil and Gas Man of the Year Award was conferred on Baru as a recognition of his hard work in making giant strides in Nigeria's oil and gas industry and beyond. His commitment to his job is something you can't comprehend. Justin Bemuni, NTA News. As the queues in petrol stations persist in the federal capital city, stakeholders in the downstream sector have resolved to partner NMPC to bridge supply gaps to mitigate the impact on motorists. Correspondent Lydia Sampson went round petrol stations in Abuja and reports that in spite of these queues, Motorists testify to orderliness, making the waiting process less cumbersome. The queues are still visible in the federal capital territory. Ironically, it is a different experience for each motorist who spoke with NTA News. Like uh, one hour, 30 minutes now, I'll be the queue since. I've just been here like uh, 10 minutes ago. And already you are getting it? Yeah, I'm getting it. No, they are putting it now. Okay. Yes. It's not quite long now, I just came. But as a friend, I'm, most of people are by prayer. Some station managers say they are determined to make the process seamless. Honestly, this uh, intervention given to us by um, NNPC have a lot. If you came as early as 6 o'clock, you cannot be able to get, join the queue. But now, you can see, you just come, you spend like 20 minutes, you get your patrol, you just go. The independent marketers acknowledge that the NMPC has intensified efforts towards supply to depots across the country. Uh, we just get supply now from Sulija Depot. All this while we don't have product. So all we are doing is bridging. Now they started giving us product. So that's why we have to follow it to complement the efforts of the NMPC. As the stakeholders in the downstream continue to collaborate for a lasting solution, motorists are keeping their fingers crossed looking forward to experience of simply driving in and out of petrol stations. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. A new world-class distribution center and logical infrastructure owned by Rekit Bekisa has been commissioned by the Ogun State Governor Ibukunle Amosu. Lukwam Adefeso reports that the governor promised to make the state more conducive and investment friendly. That was the official commissioning of a world-class distribution center and logistical infrastructure built by the Rekit Benkisa Limited in Agbara Industrial Estate of Ogun State as a way to enhance easy distribution of its goods to every part of the country. Ogun State Governor Ibekunle Amoso noted that the coming on board of the warehouse operation would not only generate employment for the youths, but also boost the production capacities of Rekid Benkisa. He added that the government will continue to formulate policies and programs to actualize its five cardinal objectives, especially in the area of industrialization. This is especially commendable because it is in with one vital plan of our five cardinal programs which seeks to drive the industrialization process within our state. On his part, the general manager, Rekit Benkisa, Mr. Rahul Morgai, represented by the company's chairman, Chief Ulu Falamo, said that the organization is a leading consumer goods company with a vision to provide its consumers with innovative products and solutions for healthier lives and happier homes. He added that the company has been operating in Nigeria for over 50 years and has also invested in a scaled manufacturing facility in Agbara Ogun State. We have invested close to 100 million naira in building a world-class distribution center and logistical infrastructure. The delegation thereafter went on a facility tour of the new distribution center and also planted a tree to signify the existence of the organization in the state. President Muhammad Buhari has congratulated uh, erudite scholar and renowned professor of international law, 
Professor Akin Oyebode at the, as he clocks at 70 years. A statement signed by Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adesino, indicates that President Buhari delightfully joins the academics, all professional colleagues, family and friends of the scholar who has spent 44 years in research, teaching and writing seminar papers that both institutions and government agencies have found most relevant for development. President Buhari commends Oyebude's diligence, discipline and exceptional brilliance in bringing fresh perspectives to international law. He prays God to grant the scholar longer life and good health and wisdom to serve the nation. In a similar development, President Muhammad Buhari heartily congratulates the former Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, Funsho Kubaluku, on the occasion of his 70th, 70th birthday anniversary. A statement released by a special advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshina, says, with Funsho Kubaluku's extension or extensive background in the oil and gas industry and public sector governance, President Buhari trusts that he will continue to avail the nation. Now, Nigerians, especially Christians, have been admonished to remain steadfast and uh, demonstrate unshaken belief in God, even in time of trials. The general of, of the seer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, gave this advice at the 2017 Holy Ghost Congress in Shagamu, Ogun State. Amit Piles has that report. Piles has that report. It was a night of great expectation for this large crowd who came from far and near to be part of the 2017 Holy Ghost Congress. They expressed themselves in songs and dance. <laughs> In line with the theme of the Holy Ghost Congress, Songs of Victory, Pastor Enoch Adeboe's message focused on God's undying love for mankind. The general overseer told members that God has not and will never change, adding that more often people lose faith in God and seek solutions to their problems through other means. He therefore urged the congregation to obey God's commandments and stand firm in the word of God, who he said has the power to deliver mankind from all infirmities. Prayers were offered for the unity and progress of Nigeria. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, Chief of Defense Staff Gabriel Olonishaki, and Governor of Lagos State Akiomi Ambode were among dignitaries at the Holy Ghost Congress. From Ogun State, venue of the Holy Ghost Congress, Amichi Pius, NTA News. Thank you for staying with us up till this moment on Weekend File. Fire, a necessity for everyday life, but just as it serves us, it can also be very dangerous. And that aspect of fire is what we're focusing on tonight on Weekend File. And after the break, we shall bring you some fire incidents and the stakeholders' perceptions on the way out from our correspondents across the nation. Stay with us on Weekend File. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome to Zamfara, where opportunities meet commitment. The more than six years of Abdul Aziz Aboubakar Yari, the people's governor, reflects new dawn, new opportunities, progress, new hope, and of course, the transformed Zamfara state. Education, health, roads, water supply, and road transformation. Name it. Abdul Aziz Yari leads for order Stefan. His vision and mission tied around implementing the President Buhari's change mantra to Zamfara people. Carry on, the people's governor. Zamfara, the pride of the nation. This message is brought to you by Arua Media Group. 
go find where I go buy UTM uniform for Junior. You no need to rush. Go find where to buy UTM uniform because Jam don't locate them for inside your phone. Inside phone. Jam don't begin sell 2018 UTM form from December 6, 2017. Reach February 6, 2018. To register by form, text surname, first name plus middle name to 55019. Jam go send profile code. Now this profile code candidate go fill when he they pay for UTM form. If they available for commercial and microfinance banks, mobile money operators. If you make mistake for your name, just text correct surname, first name, middle name to 55019. And if now your profile code you lost, just text resend to 55019. After payment, candidate go receive e pin. Now this e pin candidate go take go any accredited jam CBT center to complete online registration. If you don't receive your e pin or you lose some, just text UTM e pin or e e pin to 55019 and jam go send them back to you. Use your phone to buy your phone. Jam enhancing academic excellence. The House of Representatives Committee on Housing invites stakeholders to a two-day public hearing on request for memoranda under the following bills. A bill for an act to repeal and reenact the National Housing Fund Act Cap N45 LFN 2004. A bill for an act to repeal the National Housing Fund Act and establish the National Housing Trust Fund Act Cap N45 HB 891. A bill for an act to repeal the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria Act Cap F16 HB 911. A motion to ensure full compliance with the National Housing Fund Act, H.R. 59, 2017. Date, Tuesday 12 to Wednesday 13 December 2017. Venue, Conference Hall 231. Time, 10 a.m. daily. Individuals and organizations wishing to submit memoranda should forward same to the clerk. House Committee on Housing, Room 315, Third Floor, National Assembly Complex, Abuja. For inquiries, please call Musa Ali, Honorable Usman Babakita, Chairman, House Committee on Housing. Announcer. Oh, no! Ah! What's the problem? You remember the online business I told you I joined like two months ago? Yes, uh, that's the one that promised 50% bonus on your business. I invested 100,000 Naira. After 30 days, I got back 150,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. So I put in 500,000, expecting 750,000 Naira. But right now, I mean, I've been trying and it, it's like the website has crashed and there's no other way to contact them. But I want you, Zitia. You have been duped. No, please. Yes, no. you have been duped. Oh, that's what these four stars do. They come with Wonder Bands or Ponzi schemes and they have no life sense whatsoever from any of our financial regulators. They come with all promises that they will double your investment or triple your investment. After a short while, they disappear. Cynthia, before you put your money into any bank or investment company, make sure you do your investigation from any of our financial system regulators. Beware. Do not fall prey to the antics of Wonder Bands or Ponzi schemes. This message is from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. The Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obonaya Onu, cordially invites state commissioners, stakeholders, and the general public to the 15th National Council on Science and Technology. Venue, Imagwere Hall, Benin City, Edo State. Date, Monday 11 to Friday 15 December 2017. Time, 9 a.m. daily. Announcer, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Science and Technology. The Northern Senators Forum, we hold a three-day retreat in Casino State. Theme, Restructuring and Security. Date, 12th and 13th December 2017. Venue, Local Government Device Conference Center, Castina, Castina State. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency, Bukala Saraki, President of the Senate. Objective, to gather and collate views and position papers from eminent Nigerians on the restructuring and national unity with a view to adopting a resolution that will reasonably reflect a national consensus on restructuring and national unity. Keynote address by the Executive Governor of Casino State, His Excellency, Alhaji Aminu Bello Masari. Speaker include His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Alhaji Abubakar Saad II, Senator Dr. Abdullahi Adamu, Serikin Yekin Kevi, Chairman, Norton Senators Forum, Announcer. Welcome to Ajiji Greenish Hotel, a hotel with a difference. It has a welcoming reception that makes you feel the warmth comfort of a home. Its luxurious restaurant satisfies your taste and makes you feel real good. A Juju Greenwich Hotel prides in its well-furnished and cozy suites for class and excellence. We have the Presidential Suites, Executive Suite, Deluxe, superior room and the penthouse well equipped halls for your various kinds of meeting a juju greenwich hotel assures you of a 24-hour power supply its gym is well equipped with state-of-the-art equipment to keep you in shape and also a standard swimming pool 
Security is a top range with spacious parking lots for your cars. Located at the heart of the FCT at Juju Greenwich Hotel. Happy holiday. On behalf of myself, the government and people of Taraba State, I rejoice with our elder statesman, distinguished patriot, philanthropist and business mogul, General Teofilos Yakubu Danjuma, the abonta of the highly esteemed Kwarafa Kingdom, who clocks the landmark age of 80 years today. I wish you many more years of fruitful service to your country and humanity, particularly the poor and the needy, who have continued to benefit from your very generous foundation, the T.Y. Danjimo Foundation. Happy birthday, signed, Architect Darius Dixon Ishaku, Executive Governor, Taraba State. All right. The devastating effects of fire disaster in Nigeria have continued to destabilize economic activities with attendant consequences on markets and residential buildings. Aside the economic loss, many lives running into hundreds of thousands have been lost and several others injured. Ilyasu Ali Yakub examines the devastating effects of fire in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis efforts by the service uh, to, and other organizations to curb the trend. The peak of fire disaster is usually associated with the Hamatan season. But the question, however, is how prepared is the Federal Fire Service and other sister organizations in attending to any form of fire outbreak now that the Hamatan season has set in? Yes, I'll be calling you. Okay, okay. Our men are on their way, sir. Year in, year Nigeria has continued to incur huge economic losses due to fire disaster that has constantly ravaged many parts of the country. Available research shows that more than 6 trillion naira worth of goods have been lost due to fire disaster in the last five years. Some of the worst hit areas are Lagos, Kano, Abuja, Kaduna, Port Harcourt, Inugu, among many other states. Experts attribute the incessant outbreak of fire to low level of awareness on the management and prevention of fire among the people. What me I go and make a fire service do be say they should they should be always available when need arise. President Fire Disaster Prevention and Safety Awareness Association of Nigeria, Ahmed Badanga Lamidi, who commended President Muhammadu Buhari for the funding and procurement of firefighting equipment for the Federal Fire Service, however, lamented the comatose of various state and local government fire services. Fire does not happen uh, at the national. It happens at the grassroots. It happens at the local government. It happens at the state. So if you have the Federal Fire Service working fully optimal and you have the state fire services the way they are today, then we are really not heading uh, anywhere. We need to really um, do a lot in ensuring that um, we scale up uh, awareness, not only that, we make sure the political class understand the need for them to invest, the need for us to invest in the fire sector. It is pertinent to note that the fire service in Nigeria needs a total overhaul whereby all fire services come under one umbrella for enhanced productivity. In Abuja, Eliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Key players in the fire sector have been tasked to address the challenges of public fire services in Nigeria so as to reposition them for efficient service delivery in the fire sector. Uh, this formed part of the communique issued at the end of the ninth national fire conference held in Enugu, Nkiru, Anyafina, covered the event. The National Council on Fire urged the federal government to adopt the fire service under item 45 of the exclusive legislative list of the 1999 constitution as amended. They tax stakeholders in the fire sector to address the issue of safety and security with the seriousness they deserve as government cannot do it alone. The council emphasized the need for stakeholders to play their respective roles in ensuring a collective effort for effective fire management in Nigeria. Government at all levels were also urged to facilitate the amendment of the Fire Service Act as well as the establishment and implementation of the National Fire Policy Law. 
government at all levels to fund the fire services adequately to enhance the mitigation of the economic social impact of preventable fire disasters. The Minister of Interior, represented by the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Abubakar Magaji, applauded the resolve of the National Council on Fire to ensure continuous reduction in fire outbreaks through the development of practical and most efficient measures of prevention, control, and general management. In order to address the storage of uncontrolled fires in urban environments, we need to have fire management approach. Request that we take prominent terms of the respective roles of stakeholders in the fire sector. Enugu State Governor, represented by Permanent Secretary Supervising State Fire Service, Mr. Innocent Enegere, said the state government has approved the establishment of five fire stations in different parts of the state, as well as build the capacity of its firefighters on the importance of emergency management. There was also a goodwill message by the Director General, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, stating the agency's collaborative efforts with the Federal Fire Service in fire management. The conference had as its theme, coping with the prevailing threats, the role of stakeholders in the fire sector. In Enugu, Nkiru Anyefiana, NTA News. Uh, thank you, Inkiru. From Kaduna comes uh, this report that uh, prevalence of fire outbreaks in market is attributed to nonchalant by some shop owners to imbibe basic safety measures. Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachikum reports on the most recent Penteka fire incident and others before it. Hussein Musa and Tahir Suleiman were successful businessmen in the 90s, but the 1997 inferno that engulfed the famous Sheikh Abubakar Mahmoud Gumi Central Market Kaduna reduced them to retail selling along major streets of Kaduna. That time I was a dealer, but now I'm a retailer. Since that biggest fire incident, however, Kaduna State has continued to experience similar incidences, notably that of Kaswar Barchi Tudungwada Kaduna in 2013 that destroyed close to 50 shops and property worth 1.5 billion naira. It was followed by the fire incident that engulfed Sabangari Market in Zaria in 2013 and 2015 that destroyed hundreds of shops and one at Kaduna Station Market in 2016 early this year, as well as the recent Panteka Market fire disaster in the heart of Kaduna. Uh, in our own section only, timber section, I can say we lost over 100 trailer of timber wood. Sparks from substandard electrical cables occasioned by failure by some shop owners to switch off their appliances after closing from the day's business, improper building plan and congestion around the Panteka and other markets are the main factors firefighters identified as being responsible for the recurring cases of inferno. So far, we have access these markets we've gone around to find out uh, how best we can come in to help whenever there is an incident of fire. Well, I think uh, largely is uh, connected with the attitude and behaviors of our our traders and market operators, especially in not giving serious consideration to certain factors like the provision of fire extinguishers. For now, victims of the recent fire outbreak in Panteka Market, like their counterparts who have experienced similar incidences in Kaduna State, are counting the over one billion naira worth of losses with little hope to start a new life. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullahi Gachkung, NTA News. The impact of climate change, which uh, triggered widespread hamatan into the first quarter of the year, uh, so the last quarter of the year, however, uh, some challenges to firefighting across the Lagos metropolis. Well, however, several man-made factors have also contributed uh, to incessant fire disasters uh, recorded in the later part of the year. Now, Musa Toliat in this report takes a look at dry season, its impact on fire outbreak and prevention. 
Lagos State recorded more than 2,000 fire incidents in 2015. The trend was on a decline in 2016. 2017, however, witnessed fewer incidents owing to proactive measures taken by the state government to better equip the emergency response agencies with a view to enhancing their response time to emergencies. According to the statistics released by the Ministry of Special Duties, not less than 998 fire incidents were recorded in the second quarter of the year. Some of such incidents include a major plank market fire at Makoko, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria office went up in flame, fire at a police barrack at Adekunle in Yaba, several domestic fire outbreaks, and tanker fire disasters. The Lagos State Fire Service attributed some of the incidents to dry weather and avoidable human factors. Dry and harsh weather. So if there's an outbreak of fire, it spreads beyond imagination. The belief of the fire service is that if there's an outbreak of fire, that person that is on ground is as good as fireman. If he knows what to do, action to take, the damages will be minimal before the fire service will come around. Knowledge on the use of simple firefighting equipment and the need for the state government to invest more in research and development in emergencies are also encouraged by emergency responders. You need to know what I will call risk assessment. You need to know what areas are you vulnerable. You now start to put control measures in place. It's important that people take to fire safety rules. The Ministry of Special Duties say Apart from responding to hundreds of fire disasters, property worth billions of naira have also been salvaged. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. Now, to boost public confidence in fire service, institutions, uh, key players in the sector, advocate more funding, sufficient firefighting equipment, training and retraining of personnel to meet up with the exigencies of the job. Susan Eze reports on the situation in Enugu and Abia states. In the image of firefighters who are often accused and sometimes attacked for alleged laxity in response to fire alarm is a task before fire service institutions, which stakeholders say can only be achieved through improved service delivery. In line with the agenda of the National Fire Conference that just ended in Enugu, the state is introducing measures to improve response to fire emergencies. Beyond the plans to establish fire stations in five strategic local governments in the state, an action has been taken to tackle the constant fire disasters at the Kenyatta Timber Market in Enugu Metropolis. We will open the fire unit there. Every time, 24 hours, there's firemen and uh, officers at Timber Share Fire Service check going around, monitoring the activities of those traders there. Meanwhile, as respondents in ABA attribute fire disasters in that zone to negligence of fire preventive measures, faulty electrical appliances and adulterated petroleum products. They also called for attention on the state of roads to reduce carnage involving petroleum tankers. All right, thank you, there, Susan. And uh, next will be a conversation segment with an expert on uh, fire matters, and we'll be back very shortly. Slavery is an evil practice abolished all over the world over 200 years ago. But today, human traffickers are selling human beings as slaves in Africa. It is your responsibility to make sure that you and the people you know do not fall into slavery. Don't believe fake promises of jobs abroad. People went to say Libya, Italy. Italy no use you when they carry me on top water. Four days now they lock me for inside house, no food, no water. I nearly die. Now God, when me heaven on earth, now save me. If you get one letter for Nigeria, you get junior one, you say you don't get papa, you don't get mama, I make you come out. I beg go, God they do farm work. You better pass best when enter road. Don't accept to travel to Europe through the Sahara Desert. You may be walking into slavery. Don't be a slave. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Your perfect family is under threat by germs. Infectious diseases are now the world's biggest killer of adults and children. Every day, 16,000 children under the ages of 5 and thousands of adults die from infectious diseases. These infectious diseases are caused by germs. They are everywhere. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily. 
in unclean water, dirty surfaces, in the toilet, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes. Germs can cause deadly diseases like typhoid, diarrhea, flu, and cough to protect your family from germs. Use the power of Dettles One Cup Full for surface cleaning in your bathing water, in your laundry water, for first aid to protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be Dettle Sure. Endorsed by the Nigeria Medical Association. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws. National, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. For the last 24 years, NAVDAC has made steady progress in ensuring that the health of the nation is protected. Our collective responsibility is eliminating substandard, falsified and unsafe drugs, medical devices, foods and water. I urge all Nigerians to support NAVDAC in safeguarding our health. God bless Nigeria. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. Radio Nigeria, NTA, a voice of Nigeria, set for another time of refreshing carol. At the National Christian Center Abuja on the 10th of December 2017 for our season of praise. Theme, Jesus, our strength and peace. Featuring the host choirs. <laughs> Carol groups include the Can Choir, Four Square Gospel Church Choir, and Special Women Church Choir. Christmas message will be delivered by Reverend Felix Modo, General Overseer, Four Square Gospel Church. The event will be graced by notable Nigerians, including His Excellency Vice President Professor Yemi Shibatu, S.A.N. Red Carpet starts 1 p.m. prompts. The event selected for 3 p.m. prompts will be broadcast live. Free transport will be provided to and through strategic locations. Keep a date with Radio Nigeria, NTA, and Voice of Nigeria on the 10th of December 2017. Certainly, you'll be glad you did. And joining me in the studio uh, is the operational commander, Federal Fire Service here in Abuja. Um, he is a uh, Jeremy Ulushola. Mr. Ulushola, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. Now, let's look at uh, the, the, the main causes of fire outbreaks, especially in homes. Yes. Yeah. What really causes these fire outbreaks in homes, especially, and again, the marketplaces? Yeah. Uh, what causes uh, fire in our homes um, is carelessness. We Nigerians, but like, you know, um, if we allow children to be playing with machines, especially in this season, that is so volatile. Then, and every property, every property in in in, the, in, the, in our house is combustible. Then, if it ignite, do we have the, the necessary measure to quickly tackle that fire? No. Some, uh, for, for example, you are cooking. You li you leave your food. On the gas or on the stove, and you escort somebody, it caught fire. You are not there, or probably um, smoking in the house. Then the gas cylinder keeping it in yeah. our kitchen mm -hmm. rather than outside. This is our kind of that causes. Okay, now uh, because time is not really uh, yeah. on our side, right? yeah. what measures have been put in place to sensitize the public on some of these things we raise now? Yeah, thank you very much. We ha that is why in Federal Fire Service we have a department, the PRI policy uh, uh, that sensitizes people. Going and they go from uh, they go to uh, primary school, secondary school, educating them, even inviting them to our stations. So that because the moment we can start from uh, 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 from the grassroots, yes. the children, there are some children that are training, that are educating their parents now. Yes. Because of what we have 
they have learned from, from us. From you? Yes. Okay, there's this issue of uh, having a kind of uniformity in fire service. Uh, we learned to have state fire service, federal fire service, and what have you. Yeah. So, uh, is it necessary, you know, to have a, a uniformity in this operation? I believe um, it will work for us if have a, um, a uniformity. Mm -hmm. That is, if uh, we can call it anything we want to call it, but if we, if we are unified, I believe, actually that's my own opinion, yes. that it will be better for us so that we have one command of order. Because in this state, we don't have control over the state for now. The state on their own. And it does seem that some state governments are not really interested because uh, fire service in many states are nothing to write home about from it, some of the reports that we know, saw. I, I don't think that, it, I, I don't believe that they are not, it, you know, it, it, it depends on parity of each government. Yes. The parity of one government might be, let me build roads, let me build houses, let me equip my, my citizens. But the security of life and property might not be their uh, priority. Now, the, the, the Federal Fire Service, are, yeah. you, are you well spread or are you just in Abuja? No, 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 no. We are not, we are not just in Abuja. In fact, by, by the power of God, next year, we will we, we, uh, we'll be having offices in, in the city of Puchikuso. But presently, we are spreading. Okay, now, how equipped are you at the moment? Yeah, uh, in the past, we were not equipped. But thanks to this present government, because security, the, the safety of security and life and environment, is in their is in their, in, in their agenda. So they are uh, they have taken uh, by the power of God. Um, probably December 22, we are going to commission about 41 vehicles or 43 by the president. These 43 vehicles now, where are they going to be deployed? Do you no, have how we many are going to in Abuja? The, we are going, no, 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 not in Abuja. Uh, we have offices in uh, Akure, uh, in Ocean State, in you know, you know State. We have in Enugu State. We have in um, uh, Kano. We have in um, uh, in Enugu, we are, we are the just for uh, Phoenix. I think we are covered almost about uh, ten to fifteen states now. Now, how do you want Nigerians to uh, respond to, to to fire incidents? I, 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 assuming that your men are not there yet, you know, when the fire you know breaks out. So, uh, you know, what should be the, the the immediate action to be taken by men on ground before? Yeah, maybe at at the incipient stage, when the fire starts, I will advise Nigerians, please, we can have. We can afford a bucket, a, a, I mean, um, an iron, iron bucket. If you don't, if you don't have money to buy a stegusha, buy a bucket, put sand there. The moment you notice it, just pour the sand there. Or proper housekeeping can also help us. When you notice that the fire starts, remove all the burning materials around, around. that fire. Then. The fire we are still uh, by itself. Yeah, now, do you have adequate manpower, you know, even to, to, to handle the equipment you are, going, you are going to get, you are going to commission on the 22nd, on the, uh, 23rd, 22nd of December? By the power of God, uh, what we have now, we'll make use of it. When, when, when I talk about manpower, people who are well trained, who, who have been trained, you know, to do this job. Yeah, uh, in fact, this year alone, we have sent a lot of our staff outside the country for proper training. So, uh, at least in terms of training, the present government is trying a lot. So Wait, now, is your, is your work restricted to just fire? Or are there other incidents? No, no, no. no. Uh, I mean, we do rescue. Rescue we, operation? Uh, yes. Okay. We, uh, we, uh, we do uh, public enlightenment. Then uh, humanitarian service, service uh, okay. by supplying water to, to, to people, to the hospital and, also, and, also and so on. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Adoremi, uh, for uh, uh, being part of our show this uh, this evening. Adoremi Ulushola is the yeah. operational commander of Federal Fire Service here in Abuja. He told us uh, okay, they're going to have other um, you know, offices across the, the nation, possibly, to ensure that the Federal, High service, uh, Federal Fire Service is located in all six political zo geopolitical zones. Thank you again for coming. Thank this, you very as we much. Can file. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, Sir Ahmad Bello, Chief Obafemi Awolo. These patriots worked together to achieve independence for one united Nigeria. Although some may say Nigeria is a mistake, we all know that the Almighty never makes mistakes. God has not made a mistake by bringing us all together in the way that he has brought us together. God has put us together here 
so that we can build a community that will be an example to the entire world. One nation bound in freedom, peace and unity. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. The death has been announced of the Emir of uh, Katagum, Alaji Mohammed Kabir Omar, at uh, the age of 89. A statement issued by the family indicates that uh, the funeral prayers will be held at the Emir's palace as early by 11 o'clock Sunday morning, after which the body will be converted to Zaki for final interment. Now, sports. Uh, let's join Adiola Omokiri for sports update. And now for a quick check on the weather situation for tomorrow. It's from the Nigerian Meteorological Agency. I am blessing a Gambi. On Friday, visibility dropped to as low as 400 meters over the northern parts of the country and some parts of Enugu, where there were reports of dust devil. We expect the conditions to begin to clear over the northern parts of the country for Sunday. And as such, the northern parts of the country, the central states, and some parts of the inland cities should be in dust haze in visibility of 2 to 5 kilometers. Other parts of the southern cities will be cloudy, except for some parts of the southeast coast, where there are possibilities of isolated thunderstorms to affect areas around Calabar, some parts of Bayelsa states, and rivers. It is important to take precaution against exposure to dust at this particular time. For the maximum and minimum temperatures across the country, please stand by for the details. I'll see you again. And that's our program for today. Join us again next week where we'll bring you another package of news, views and analysis. From all of us here, it's good night.